So Hanson, how are you? We're pretty good. Yeah? yeah. You just arrived in London? Uh, we've actually been in London for a few days. Are you here for very long? Well, Staying I mean, we here for a couple of weeks. We just doing some some stuff before the shows, and then we got five shows next week. Uh, we're doing sort of something called Five to Five, where every night we're playing a different album in its entirety, and then the last night is our new album. So that's the King's College. Yes, King's, King's College. So five nights at King's College. Yeah. So you're over here promoting the latest album, Shout It Out, isn't mm -hmm. it? That's right. What can we expect from the new record? Well, I mean, partly with the album, you know, some context for Hanson it helps. <laughs> yeah, Where we've yeah, come yeah. from, and we've, we've always talked about um, classic soul music and rock and roll. I mean, we're fans of music, so you're always looking for inspirations and, and listening. Um, but this album, in a way, it, I think it definitely come full circle as far as just what we're highlighting in, in, the, in the music. It's a little more... A little more R&B, a little bit more of a backbeat to it than the last couple albums, um, as far as an overall record. Yeah, yeah. And it's um, it's a, just a really organic um, feeling album. Yeah. Like there's no, there's not really any extra fat on it. It's just really stripped down to the to the arrangements and to the melodies, and and, yeah. and, and I think hopefully it's an album that, that uh, reminds people sort of uh, what makes. Hanson kind of unique, and, and I think it comes back to the songs and, and, uh, and the melodies. I, th I think it broadens in there. A few people have, have written about the record in the US and kind of said it's kind of like, um, like organic, kind of soulful pop or something like that. I think in, in, in broad senses, I think that that's a pretty decent description of kind of what it is that this record is, but certainly in general, kind of what it is that we do in some form or another is kind of. Because it, it comes from that love of R and D, but also the love of pop music in general. Because you've always had that a bit of a feel of of the sort of Motownish heavy yeah, in yeah. your music. We we grew up listening to that stuff, and I think uh, ho hopefully we channel a little bit of it, just because that would be a yeah. huge compliment. Cut across our fingers that some Motown is a you know, good old rock and roll seeps in there somewhere. Yeah, the, the other thing about our band though is, I mean, we you you try and put labels on it, but you know, sometimes the things you're thinking in your head don't necessarily all translate. Yeah. yeah. And because even when we don't mean to, you know, there's a little bit of a there's an organic rootsy kind of quality com to the way we Midwest country well, element well, sometimes. I don't know if I'd say country, but <laughs> yeah. we've got. I mean, we have a little bit of a of our earthy feeling to to our record uh, records and the way we partly because of our, our harmonies and and you know just the fact that we we really kind of. Um, we admire musicianship, and we, we like the fact that we want it to, to be real. And so I think um, it's it's rock and roll. I mean, rock and roll was basically like a little bit of the dusty Americana with some with some blues and some gospel, and you know all of that smashed and together. And that's some nice polished yeah. <laughs> sensibility. Yeah. So you're you're going to be touring the well, you're going to be doing these five shows yeah. at King's College. Yeah. What what can we expect from the live shows? Well, the shows are literally the handsome repertoire from top to bottom. Top. You're yeah. going through five albums, aren't you? From Sunday yeah. through Thursday? Uh, yeah. Through Friday. We through actually Friday. We yeah. have a break on Thursday. Last it's one. four <laughs> nights. <laughs> one little break. Four nights in a row, and then one day break, and then we conclude with the final night, which is the new album. So is it each night is dedicated to the record? Each, each record, and yeah. is that only music played? From those records, at? each night, yeah. So on the first night, we'll play all of Middle of Nowhere in the oh. order of the album as it was, and then the second night will be the summer out, third night underneath, fourth night the walk, and then the last night is shouted out. And so, yeah, it's the, the plan uh, is to play them as a record, sort of uh, like listening to the records, only they're being performed live by us instead of your stereo. And, you know, it, it's a different kind of show than we normally play. Yeah. When we normally play a show, we decide to set, you know, 10 minutes before we go on stage and change it while we're on stage and sort of, there's, there's songs you play a lot, you know, songs that people know, songs that people expect to hear, you know, singles and things that you play a lot, but you, you, you try and you mix it up every night to keep it fresh for yourself. But these shows, I mean, every fan in the audience is going to know what the next song is because it's the order of each record. And um, 
that it makes it different in a good way. I, I think it it's sort of uh, the anticipation, the expectations. I, I think uh, I enjoy these shows because it is refreshing for me, uh, you know, to to know what you're about to do next. To think of it more like a, a one giant piece of music rather than a lot of little songs. It, it's one album. It, it flows, uh, you know, and and for that reason. Because you're playing an album, songs aren't necessarily in the same place you would put them in a different kind of show. You know, Umbop is the second song we'll play, you know, and, yeah. and you know, we'll end with Man from Milwaukee on the first night, for instance, you know, which is a hidden track from that record that, you know, it's sort of like it's... Fans must lap that up because it's things yeah. like, it's, it's, it's songs like that, like the hidden tracks, for example, and, you know, the songs that aren't released that you know, fans don't really get to hear much of, and it's, not many bands are actually doing that these days, are they? Yeah, like there's, touring definitely, yeah. there's, there's definitely songs that we don't play live that we will be playing during these shows. You know, songs, I think of uh, songs, there's some of the yearbook off of the first record, there's some will turn it down off of uh, the walk, um, that you know, fire in the mountain off the walk. Songs that we almost never play, and, and these are shows where Every single one gets played. <laughs> every song gets played, yeah. and um, it makes it special. It, it, it's it's fun for us because you don't play certain songs oftentimes just because they're hard. They're hard to pull off, and and you really have. And to it's also hard to find a spot in the show sometimes for certain songs. Well, too. You, you've got to dedicate a lot of energy to making that song feel right. Yeah. You know, and um, for these shows, it just felt. It, you know you knowing, going into it, preparing for it, you really can take the extra time to go, okay, we're going to be ready to play these songs that are just that different arrangement that, you know, why are we playing this song in Dead Again? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if we go back to the start, yeah. how did it all start for you guys? Because you, you were all quite young, I mean, you, that were, you were 12 when Umbop came out, yeah. I mean, and that wasn't even the, the first work that you no, had definitely done. Definitely not. No, we, so, so how, how did it all start? How did, how did in, hence in fact, you were actually one. Well, I was yeah. 11. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. We were, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the very first music we heard was when we were kids, and the fact that we, I mean, really young kids, and I was, I was six, you know, or seven when I first remember hearing harmony and just being able to harmonize with stuff. Just well, as, yeah, I mean, I was, in the genes. I was actually talking about that because I we were kind of going through some of this kind of stuff, talking about the history in general. And and when we were in 1989, when we went uh, we went to South America for a year with our dad, because uh, the whole family went down there because he had was thing with his job, and we were listening to the late 50s rock and roll because that was the only stuff we had. Cause we weren't listening to Spanish radio down, down there. <laughs> exactly. So you know. and and and. and and I, rem and I remember asking Taylor the other day, like, I, I don't remember anyone ever teaching no, you to harmonize. So, like, all of a sudden, you know, we're, like, singing songs, and then Taylor's able to go, you know. Certain things are just in the genes, and yeah. you can't really say whether it's, you know, credit to you or not. It just shows up. And, I think and it's because our folks were definitely singers and definitely yeah. kind of had that in them, and, for sure. I mean, really, just quickly, within, you know, a few, few years, it was, you know, with friends and family, they kind of saw like, oh, you guys can sing, and we would sing in living rooms and sing at, you know, gatherings with friends and stuff. And it, uh, you know, in the summer, or the spring of 1992, we, we threw our name into the arts festival in Tulsa, around town. We auditioned. And we auditioned, and we got a little slot, and we did our first show. And next year, that'll be 20 years ago. Yeah. Um, so I think from it's there, scary. We, I mean, <laughs> early on, we very, we very quickly, like, had a collective... Um, identity as a band, we had our own opinions about songs and started writing songs really quickly and, and you know, felt strongly about that. And, and you know, you'd see somebody on TV, another band, or you hear, you know, old recordings of the Jackson 5 or other bands that were young, mm. and go, oh yeah, we can do that. So I think we, um, you know, had a, a kind of strong sense of purpose and self from the beginning, and, and really, if, if you look at the, all the decisions we've made since we were a local indie band, licking stamps, you know, and putting them on flyers and sending them out. Playing, you know, from, well, I don't know, I guess all, at some point we were probably playing close to three shows a week at um, and all early the, on. And all the way through, in, um, past past the indie days and you know having a ton of success, 
um, we've really always had the same kind of credo of just, you know, we, we don't need anyone else necessarily to tell us whether it's good or not. I mean, of course, your, your audience will tell you whether it's good or not when you yeah. play it. Yeah, because um, the and, lawyer will be there or not. <laughs> and, and so I, I think you just have to be, you know, to, you have to be willing to, to kind of write the ship if you feel like you're kind of up your own, uh, you know, uh, up in your own crap, you know, and, 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 and thinking that you're great and be willing to go, oh, that wasn't that good. But as far as the initial idea, we've always been sort of self-driven and, and motivated, and, and, and that's kind of, I think, part of why we why we're still here, and why we're still doing it. Yeah. You know? So you, you had um, some, some issues with the record company, mm -hmm. yeah. I, I read. Um, you're now doing your own thing independently. How, how does it work now? What's the process like for now that you don't have the sort of constraints yeah. somewhat of, of yeah. a record? Well, the, the interesting thing about you know our issues with work company work, they're really not that unique. Yeah. That's the, the scariest thing. So yeah. uh, we were signed by Mercury originally, which was a good label for us. Lots of you know, bands like Bon Jovi and Cardigans and sort of good pop, Stuff that sort of fit with hands, rock and roll, rock and roll records, and um, a lot of long history of R&B records. A big merger happened, and that record label, you know, two hundred bands were dropped, and we ended up on Island Def Jam, which is sort of run by Def Jam, which is a rap label and yeah. urban focused, and it's just sort of like really. You couldn't have dropped us too because obviously this, yeah, yeah, this would have been great if you would have dropped it. Retarded. You don't know. You know we're not going to put on some bling and you know anyway. And and so what we realized was you know in an industry where that makes sense, we need to do something different, something that doesn't make sense. And so we formed our own label in 2003 and started releasing our records ourselves. And you know that that doesn't mean anything really other than we pay for it. In, in truth, on the front end, you know, okay. instead of a label fronting money to promote a record, we front money to promote a record, um, and we front money to make a record instead of a label fronting money in. And so, you know, we still, you know, hire a company to distribute the records and put them in the retail stores, you know, that are still left, and you know, you know, work out, help work out the deals with the digital distributors and. We still hire, you know, publicity companies and online marketing companies, and buy billboards from this company or that company, and you know, hire out our radio staff to work their songs on radio. And it, it, it's really just sort of a commitment um, at a different level to your own success or failure, and sort of the commitment to say, you know, when I'm done making the record, I'm going to start picking up the phone, and calling people, and acting like. A businessman to to, yeah. to make my record work, rather than I think traditionally the the position of the artist is sort of how are we doing? I don't know. Yeah. You know, I hope my manager's taking care of it. And that's not you know that's not a job that every artist wants to take on. And and to be honest, it's a job that I don't think any of us really want to take on, other than the necessity to realize in a changing music business um, where we sort of proliferation of digital technologies has helped and really hurt the business, you have to be willing to invest that much more energy yeah. in reaching fans and, and getting your music out to be successful. You have to sort of go all in or all out. You know, this is a sort of every hand you're, you're putting everything in the pot because um, ultimately I think I think that's what people who are really invested in what they do and wanting to make great art and wanting to sort of change the world through great music that affects people's lives and you carry it with them for years. You know, that, that's what you do. Yeah. I, I have to add on to that one little thing which I think is that maybe even also looking at it differently than just saying, you know, we're, we're business men, quote unquote. I think really what it is is it's really our approach of Amongst other things, almost like staying local. Because what what is it the local band does when they're trying to get themselves, you know, out there and like and really do? They do that kind of work that a manager or a record label or something like that would do. So if you kind of stay in that headspace on some level or another, and just always remember that that you're going to have to do those kind of things, that I think in general what's kind of cool about where the business is going, 
there are a lot of challenges and it's very, very difficult to make money making records. But at the same time, be successful, be successful in general at all, frankly, in the music business. A period. And it gives you the freedom as well. But it gives you the freedom to, to continue to focus on the music for the sake of the music, yeah. then ultimately to take that and try and find the best foot that you can put forward and keep the hustle going. I you think know? part of what Isaac's saying is we run the label so that we can do what we've always done and not not be forced to compromise for the wrong reasons. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah, it's like it's like the, no. the reasons we've been lucky enough to be successful are, you know, the way we look at writing songs, the way we you know the things we do as a man, we're gonna keep always doing those same things and not not let, you know, a rap label or a merger or this or that sort of get in the way of being authentic to our own creative vision. Yeah. You know? And so as soon as that stuff gets in the way, you've got to get that stuff out of the way and do something different. The things that have happened around us have been challenging. Challenging, but the way <laughs> we've chosen to deal with it has been really yeah. unique. Yeah. One last question for you, what's next? You're um, over here in London promoting yeah, yeah. so what, what, what? In the short term, what's next is an announcement of a tour, hopefully very soon. We're coming back to the UK. Um, We're we anticipating sometime in the autumn, some you know, kind of shooting October, for October, November, sometime. And we are going to be back to do a, a V Festival, play at V Festival, which would be yeah. cool. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, I think that's the next kind of right about to happen, and I'm sure there'll, there'll probably be a follow-up single and, um, here in the UK. And and then honestly, we're we're creatively just thinking ahead for the next projects. I mean, it's it's hard when you're doing all the things we do within our team to be like, oh, let's carve out a month and just make music. Yeah. But you've got to find ways to do that so that you're just continuing to get ahead of the next project and you're staying inspired and excited. Yeah, exactly. Because so, the music, because you got to get you got to get you know churning on the next thing so that you actually have something to talk about. In the next okay. round. And that's been the biggest challenge I think has been to keep. To, to when you're doing all this stuff that is not the creative process, to always keep the creative process um, in, mind. in mind, and 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 to not forget that you're not going to be, you, you have to keep maintaining that and keep constantly thinking about it. Otherwise, you'll find yourself two years down the line and go, oh wait, we got to stop. We got to like create a record you know, very quickly. <laughs> Ultimately, why else do we do it? <laughs> other than for the music and for the, the ability to write a song and yeah. sort of hopefully change yeah. somebody's day and make them life through you know, great music. Yeah.